updated version of the plugin Kimbo for Adobe Illustrator CS6 and CC a while ago. Kimbo is a plugin for Adobe Illustrator that adds 13 new tools in two discrete toolbars um, and it just adds to Illustrator's palette. These tools permit the creation of artwork that would otherwise be difficult or time consuming to create. It's a plugin that I've been using for years but which in essence died a few years ago with the advent of CS6. I teamed up with the original developer, and who's also the original um, UI guru for Adobe Illustrator. His name is Stephen Vincent, really, really great comedian guy. And a new development team, and a new QA person to essentially bring Kimbo back from the dead, to reanimate Kimbo in Illustrator's contemporary user interface. Kimbo does a bunch of stuff really well. It makes non-native vector shapes, does a bunch of vector slicing and dicing that, have been, that should have been built into Illustrator versions and versions ago, and it has a ton of both generative and interactive tools based on symmetry groups, um, kind of the basis for Arabic ornament or Islamic ornament. In particular, it's really useful creating, for creating visual form in Illustrator that involves mirroring, abstraction, and creating ornament. If I'm trying to do illustration-driven work in Illustrator without Kimbo, especially things like icons for the web, it's kind of like, I feel like I'm eating a steak, but I, I only have a fork. I don't have a knife. <laughs> it's really helpful, because you can draw half an icon and then just flop it, and it connects all the paths, and you don't have to do all the bullshit that you usually have to do. Um, I'm going to say that this was my first dive into creating real software, and by when I say real software, I actually don't really mean that. I've designed and developed digital typefaces through my type foundry for years. But Kimbo is the first time I've gone outside of type design. And fuck, it was scary. It's really hard. Um, I hired a developer in India, something that I was really wor worried about, because throughout my career, I've been really committed to paying first world wages to people. Um, but luckily, I googled her name, and uh, I found a Hindi dating site. And her name popped up immediately, and it had like how much she makes a year. So <laughs> she makes more than anybody in my hometown. I'm from New York, so not New York City. I'm from the country in New York, so I felt pretty safe. Yeah, once I figured that out, I signed a contract, and I wasn't so worried. And a good friend of mine works at a prominent software company in the U.S., and she offered to QA for me secretly, and I'm incredibly indebted to her. Thank you, secret person. I'm talking to the video camera. I love you, secret person. Um, <laughs> She like really like smashed her head against version after version of this for both PC and Mac, and um, really made it pretty amazing. So after porting and debugging and contracts were signed and payments were made and microsite making was finished, I tweeted it. That was July 19 of 2014. I'm going to go off script. The man who responded to my tweet, the only one, he is right there, Mr. Hawking King. <laughs> Like, it's one thing when you make something, but it's another thing when your friends I use it. respond. Thank you. Thank you so much, dude. Really, that's huge. So, like, I basically, I've made no money on this. Like, I just sunk in a fair chunk of money, and uh, that's all right. Because I was really lucky. Um, I had a bit, bit of extra cash at the time. Um, back in 2007, I designed the identity for a project called Topsy, which was a search engine for Twitter which was acquired by Apple last year. And it was great because I was able to, one, pay off my school loans instantly. Two, take my wife out to a really nice dinner. Three, <laughs> buy said wife a really fancy dress. And that was it. The money was gone. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> but so was my debt. And that, that was really amazing. 
I would like to say at this point that this is not an advertisement for this piece of software that most of you could not give a shit about. The story gets deeper. So since doing this, <laughs> except I still put the URL in. <laughs> uh, that was not time, but it worked out for me. Uh, so I've gotten more and more into these ideas of abstraction and ornament. There's a great book by a guy named Claude Bragdon called Projective Ornament, which is an ornate masterpiece of thinking and illustration. A uh, book by a gentleman named Yoshihisa Shodai, um, who is the art director for Idea Magazine, Japan's oldest graphic design magazine, called The Natural History of Printer's Flowers, and read a bunch more essays about ornament. And links to these assorted essays I mentioned are on the Rod the Lightning Facebook page. The thing is, ornament and the decorational. These are ideas and aesthetics that contemporary graphic designers don't seem very interested in. Totalizing design aesthetics and totalizing design rhetoric are the norm today. Today, the idea of oppositionality is anathema. Basically, people, they want options. They don't want to be against anything. Designers may speak of critica criticality or inquiry, but the notion of rejecting, of pushing something away, is absent. Designers prefer the idioms of choice and preference. In making Kimbo, I see rejection. It's a piece of software that will never sell well, but it's software that I personally find invaluable for making a lot of visual work. Kimbo is an enabler for everything missing from standard graphic de design today. Complexity, ambiguity, and error. It's got bugs, so there are a fair amount of chance processes in play as well. It's this mix of intentionality and randomness that make it feel both truly creative and innovative as a tool for me. I just said creative and innovative. <laughs> I don't use those, those two adjectives lightly. There's, an there's a ubiquity of these over, or overused catchwords, creativity and innovation, and they are perhaps the surest indicators that contemporary culture is currently in a state of decline. The noun creative has been synonymous with the denizens of ad agencies since the 1960s, which is evidence of a broad co-optation of the term that has insinuated itself unopposed into the popular lexicon. If we, know, if we now assume that any notion of a creative must be linked to marketing, then how is it even possible to talk about creativity in a way that is neither insipid nor irrelevant? Innovation, creativity's idiot cousin, is barely in better condition. Although it's a word not blighted by dubious associations with marketing, it has the problem of never being precisely defined. Yet, it is impl implicitly packed with all kinds of moral and virtuous goods. But if innovation is shorn of its moral virtue, when one considers that almost anything can be considered the product of innovation, what do you have? Unregulated credit derivative markets? Unmanned drone assassinations? These must be considered products of innovation, but they lack any inherently good moral value. It's, like, it's most likely that people would find both of these options either despicable or vaguely frightening. So it's in this conceptual wasteland that contemporary culture must define itself. And this folding in of these things is a really pleasant reflection on contemporary technology and design, as much as it is, as it is on culture today. Bringing it back to Kimbo, this is a project that's very intentionally limited in scope. By cultivating it, I was truly starting down. Because I don't have any grand aspirations for it, not in a utopian sense and not in a capitalist sense. In short, it's uncool software for an uncool time. It's similar to contemporary methodologies for software development because it's layered on top of another piece of software, but, but without the grandiose social gestures lurking elsewhere. But somehow, like in this video, as I manipulate vectors, I see enormous potential. Because really, I see something else. Within, I see me, keeping something I love alive and just being in the moment, enjoying the past, the present, and the future, and reflecting on the whole spectrum. So that's the end of my essay. Um, as I mentioned, this whole thing is not a pitch for software. Hopefully these words made you feel something. <clears throat> Maybe they pissed you off. Maybe they made you happy. Maybe they made you sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the latter. Um, currently on Kickstarter, I'm starting a book of essays about design and culture. It's called Parting It Out. Um, when I was about 16 years old, I and my brother used to steal cars and take them apart and resell 
the parts to the <laughs> <laughs> And that is what the title means. Um, basically, it's like, that's a good way of it. basically, yeah. Um, just like, how do you like? Like, I use the lens of design, and not just like I'm a graphic designer, but the, there are essays about architecture and capital D big design and graphic design and typography. How do you look at culture, and how do you take it apart, examine it, and then put it back together? Every cell, every cell. So. Yeah, I don't know. Just that's basically it. This is the URL for the Kickstarter. If you feel like taking a photo, that'd be great. It ends in a week. There's not that much money left to go on it. You know, I don't want to beg and plead, but take your dollars or yen, as it were. So, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.